Unavailability of large land parcels and crumbling structures across Mumbai are two prime reasons why the city has turned to redevelopment. While homeowners def definitely gain from this by receiving a new flat with additional amenities, but if not carried out the right way, the losses are also likely to be staggering. So what are the guidelines that you as the homeowner need to bear in mind before handing over your home for redevelopment? Ankita Sinha finds out. Bharat Gala was ecstatic when his building went in for redevelopment in 2010. Plans were drawn up, developers were approached and agreements were signed. But due to a stroke of bad luck and a few changes in government policies, nearly five years on, Bharat Gala is still far from receiving possession of his home. Since 2010, they were not issuing the NOC. But luckily we got the NOC and we, we have now started our in the, this re-project redevelopment by January 2015. But we waited for four and a half years. Despite the many horror stories associated with redevelopment projects, it still happens to be the only way forward in a city like Mumbai. Space crunch and dilapidated buildings are the main reasons buyers and developers are opting for redevelopment. So what are the guidelines that you as a homeowner need to follow? For one, a decision this big is taken up by the special general body of a society after receiving suggestions in writing from the members of the Cooperative Housing Society. Minutes of every meeting must be recorded and a project manager and tax consultant must be brought on board. Appoint a very good tax consultant for the individuals because the lawyer would represent the society in helping with the development agreement and maybe dealing with the developer to some extent. <clears throat> but your taxation you'll have to handle. And this is not an easy area. I mean, there are positions which in our minds as professionals are clear, but the department, the income tax department still wants to challenge them. So it's a minefield in some respect. Here are the documents that need to be scrutinized. For one, you must ask for a copy of the letter of intent submitted by the builder to licensing authority. An intimation of approval and disapproval received by the builder no objection certificates obtained by the builders from various departments like fire brigade and police among others. Commencement certificate approved layout plans that are being submitted by the builder, any amendments made to it, completion certificate and finally the occupation certificate. During the construction period, the developer must pay a specific amount that has been decided upon as rent to the home buyers. This is in addition to the corpus fund which is a lump sum amount. But very often when the project gets delayed, many developers fail to keep up with their commitment. project becomes unfeasible, it becomes unviable, uneconomical for a developer. Naturally and obviously the developer stops even paying the rents. And in which case, the, the project affected person finds it very difficult because the roof above one's head is gone. And this is unfortunately reality with many of the redevelopment projects. That being said, developers too have their set of challenges to handle in redevelopment projects. The most important one being changing government policies. Redevelopment projects are a little bit longer gestation. So at what stage you are, government policies is one of the challenges which you can say because there have been a policy changes keep happening in this. So there you have it, redevelopment is the future of Mumbai. But for it to go off without any hitch, these are a few guidelines you must follow. From Mumbai, Ankita Sinha for NDTV.